Hey guys, Caleb here from the Peace Engineering team. And today I'm here to show you guys uh, a little bit of a guide on how to use the Copilot inside of the VS Code extension. So yeah, the Copilot that we have in the VS Code extension is a really great all-in-one tool for developers. You know, it really helps you out with, you know, reusing code that you've written in the past, um, asking questions and getting answers about the repository that you have opened or really any other material. Um, as well as, you know, code generation features to just really uh, speed up your development velocity and, you know, not have to write so much boilerplate uh, in your day-to-day -day work. So, yeah, getting right into it, uh, what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to show the Ask Copilot feature um, on a file. So I have this parser.ts file open here. Basically, what it was doing is it is using the asset search filters API and available in pieces OS. And it's also doing quite a bit of string parsing. So what I'll do is I'll just right click on this uh, parser.ts file uh, and then click on ask copilot. And I'm just going to say, how can I use the asset filters API in pieces OS. Now this is a great example of using this for question answering and it went ahead and it was able to pull a lot of the information that I have uh, within this file and it's actually able to uh, actually generate me a query um, which is great. So yeah, it showed me how to not only create the filters but also how to uh, call the filters API that's available inside of pieces OS. So that, yeah, this is really nice. Um, you know, this is a great example of not only question answering, but also code generation. Um, so yeah, moving on to the next one, what I'll do is I'm going to ask Copilot about the snippet that I have saved. So if you, you can, you can hover on the snippet or you can open it up to see the content of it. But what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to, uh, ask Copilot, um, I modify this ES build config to have dot slash parser dot ts as the input and dash dis dash output dot js as the output. So yeah, basically what this is doing is this is going to take that ES build config that I have and it's going to go ahead and basically slightly modify it so it's actually going to function properly in this uh, in this project. So yeah, very simply, now that I have the snippet, what I can do is I could hypothetically, uh, you know, copy this, paste it into my uh, editor, create a new ES build config, and then I'll be up and running um, with my JavaScript bundle uh, very quickly, which is very nice. Um, this is one great way that I that I like to use the save materials feature is particularly with my JavaScript bundling. Um, it's kind of like how in CI/CD you're a lot of times reusing the same config. So I just like to have uh, some of my favorite configs, particularly um, this one saved in my pieces library so I can use it later. Now, as you can see, like each of these code blocks, you have uh, a button to save. So I could save this snippet to pieces. Um, I could even generate a shareable link if I wanted to. And furthermore, I can run this code in the terminal. For example, like if you're generating some bash scripts, I can even insert this code at my cursor and I can even copy this snippet in order to paste it on in order to paste it later. So yeah, that's, that's, we got through asking about a file. We then asked about a snippet and now what I'll go ahead and I'll show is I'll show how you can use the ask copilot feature um, within one of your terminals that's inside of VS code. So what I'll do here is I'll just go ahead and I'm going to run a command which is going to list all of the TypeScript files that are present within my current directory. So what I'll do is ls, ls pipe it into grep, and then .ts. So as you can see, it went ahead and it listed all of my TypeScript files that are present in my current directory. Um, but maybe, maybe I wanted to list also all of the children. So get all of the TypeScript files that are not only in this current directory, but also in the directories that are child directories of this directory. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and highlight this code here. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to click ask copilot once again. So, and then I'm going to say, can you modify this snippet to list all recursively list all children as well. 
provide me a code snippet. So yeah. So it went ahead and it explained to me that instead of using the ls command, I could use the find command. And here we go. You can say find dot dash type f dash name, and then you do star dot ts. And yeah, it went ahead and it not only listed the TypeScript files that are in my current directory, but it also went ahead and listed the other files that I have present in my node modules that are also uh, TypeScript files. So yeah, that's a really another excellent tool. Um, you can you can ask you can use the ask copilot feature um, on a snippet, on a file, on a folder, on a directory, even in your terminal, and of course, also inside your editor uh, if you wanted to. So that's a, that's one of the that's one of my favorite features in the in the VS Code Copilot is the Ask Copilot feature. It really, just makes uh, you know interacting with both your code and the LLM, just a really seamless experience. No need to copy paste or do anything like that. Um, and you can even have it available in a, inside of a keyboard shortcut. As you can see, there's a, there's a keyboard shortcut for it right here, uh, which is command shift a. So moving on to the, uh, to the next portion of this video, what I'd like to show is I would like to show the, the context selector. So what the context selector is, is this is a place where you can add anything that you want as context. So what I'll do here is I'll open this up and I have, you know, very familiarly, you have files, folders, snippets, uh, and messages, and even websites. So using this menu, you can add just about any developer material uh, that you might want to add to to your context. So we have shown the Ask Copilot feature about your files, folders, snippets, and even within your terminal. What I'd like to show now is another really powerful feature that really helps out in your day-to-day -day work as a developer, which is our context selector, which is available in the Copilot. Now, if I go ahead and if I open up the context selector, You'll see all the familiar uh, collections that you can add as context. As we mentioned earlier, there's files, there's folders, there's snippets, there's even messages. If you have a message in your chat that you would really like to use basically to like ground your conversation, uh, this is a great way to do that. And there's even this new one called uh, websites. I'm going to be showing the websites one today. So what I'll go ahead and do is I'm going to navigate back to my browser and I'm going to copy that URL, and then I'm going to add this as context. So there we go. I just added that website as context. And basically what that website is, is it's just a, uh, it's a getting started uh, page on our documentation site, which is a little bit of an explanation about what pieces of OS is and that sort of thing. So what I'll do is I'll ask a question which is relevant to that website. And I'm going to say, uh, what's is pieces OS. And yeah, so now the LLM is going to go ahead and uh, utilize that website that I added and it's going to give me a nice explanation. Yeah, pieces OS is a background service provided by pieces for developers. It operates offline and on device, blah, 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 etc., etc. Uh, you guys can read this, you guys can pause and read this yourself if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, this is another great way to use the Copilot. Um, you can add stuff as context, and even if I wanted to like navigate away from this conversation back to the one with, that we were at earlier, if I went ahead and I went back and I open up context again, you can see that it still has the this website used as context. So yeah, context is uh, persistent on each conversation that you have um, inside the Copilot. So if you go back to a conversation, you don't really need to try to remember anything about you know okay what what context that I have selected, do I need to add it back again? It's all just there and persisted for you. Great, so moving along. Next, what I wanted to show is I wanted to show our local LLM capacities. So that's right, we have a lot of on-device uh, LLMs that you can use. Um, we have Mistral, we have Llama 2, we have Phi 2, we even have Code Llama coming up soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you guys how you can use uh, you know, a local LLM in your day-to-day -day development. So 
what I'll do here is I'm just going to, you know, click this button. Now you can see I have Mistral 7 billion parameters selected. And kind of just to show off a little bit, I'll go ahead and I will just shut off my Wi-Fi. And as you can see, I'm going to now interact with a fully local co-pilot um, that is only that, it, that, it, that has absolutely no access to any internet. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I guess I'll just select this and boom. And I'm going to go ahead and ask Copilot about it. So what I'll say is uh, given given a string that is formatted with nested parentheses, how can I construct a syntax tree from it? So yeah, this is a little bit of a difficult question for Mistral. Um, it's going it's to go ahead and it's loading this in. It's loading the model into my memory, which is why it's taking a second. So yeah, it went ahead and it read in my context. And now it is explaining to me uh, how I can construct a syntax tree. Moving on from showing off how you can add uh, many materials as context to your conversations, what I would now like to show is some of our local LLM capacities. So yeah, that's right. We have many on-device LLMs that are available for you to download and run on your own machine. And I would like to show off uh, one of my favorites today, which is the Mistral 7 billion parameter. Um, it's a really great high fidelity model and it's able to do quite a bit um, really all just from your own device. Um, and now one of the consequences of this is you can actually use this copilot without any internet whatsoever. So what I'd like to do is I'll go ahead and I'll go over to my uh, LLM selector and I'll open this up and you can see there's this recommended one here, Mistral 7 billion GPU. I'm going to go ahead and select that one and then uh, close out of this. And I'm going to ask this to please convert this snippet to a uh, Dart. So what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and convert this TypeScript snippet that I have here, which is doing a little bit of uh, string parsing, etc. And it's going to basically convert this entire snippet into a Dart snippet. Now what's going on right now is it's actually loading up the model, which is why it took a second. It's about a six gigabyte memory overhead. But yeah, as you can see, Mistral is nicely um, converting that snippet that I have into a Dart snippet. And as you can see up here, I have absolutely no internet. So yeah, it's a really, really great tool uh, to use. You know, if you are in a if you're in a scenario where you really need to be secure about the code that you're sending and receiving from the cloud, um, or if you just don't have access to internet, for example, if you're on an airplane or something like that, this is another great use case of one of these local models. So yeah, Mr. went ahead and converted this TypeScript snippet into a Dart snippet for me. This is a really amazing uh, feature that we're super happy to offer to you guys. So yeah, Mistral was able to convert this TypeScript snippet into a Dart snippet for me, which is really, and is completely offline and on device. So yeah, hopefully you guys have a, have a nice grounding on how you can use the Copilot inside of the Pieces VS Code extension. Uh, we went over some of the Ask Copilot features that are present uh, on files, folders, snippets, and within your terminal. We went over a little bit on using the context selector to select things as context. And we were able to even show off the offline capabilities of the VS Code extension uh, by using an on-device local large language model. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, definitely leave something in the comments if you have any other further questions. And yeah, happy coding, guys.